Hello and welcome to HP Boarding, a gaming channel that's dedicated to playing uh, solitaire board games and the solitaire variants of non-solitaire board games. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Uh, anyway, today we will be taking a look at Elder Sign. Uh, so yeah, this is a game set in the Arkham Horror universe or the uh, Lovecraftian uh, Cthulhu Mythos universe. Uh, the game is based on Arkham Horror, the investigators that are in this game are from Arkham Horror and uh, this is basically a lighter, much much lighter version of Arkham Horror. Uh, it's dice based so there's a lot of dice rolling, uh, there's pretty much no theme at all uh, unless you are familiar with uh, Arkham Horror or, or the Lovecraftian Cthulhu mythos uh, you will not be getting any sort of theme from uh, this game which is kind of a shame I think because that's actually what I enjoy the most um, playing Arkham Horror or reading uh, the uh, Lovecraftian novels but that's okay I'm pretty familiar with the mythos so I can still enjoy this type of game and it is a fun game uh, even though you are not familiar with uh, that kind of fiction or not familiar with the universe that this game is supposed to be set in. So let's uh, take a quick look at the setup of the game. So let's briefly take a look at what this game is all about. Uh, this is a visual uh, representation of the entire game basically. Uh, here you have all of the different parts of the game, the important, the meat of the game. Uh, you have a villain that's competing against a team of investigators. Uh, they are both trying to fill up separate tracks. The villain is trying to fill up its doom track here. For Yog Sothoth, he has 10 spaces on his doom track. Uh, the uh, heroes or the investigators are trying to fill up their uh, elder sign track, which, which is represented by these elder signs down here. And for them, uh, the amount is 12 so they have to have 12 elder signs to successfully seal yog sothoth from awakening the main weapons of the heroes or the investigators are these dice down here uh, the six green dice represent the unmodified uh, the unmodified role for the heroes this is what they will be using uh, to complete different adventures and gain different items the red and yellow die are actually powerful versions, more powerful versions of the green die and these can come into play by certain effects or certain cards that the, the investigators can play uh, adding them to the dice pool. Okay, so here we have a character card or an investigator card uh, and just to take a quick look at the anatomy of the card uh, here we have Ashcan Pete uh, I will go from top to bottom, left to right, just move through the card to kind of show off uh, how to read these cards. These are pretty simple to read, but uh, let's, for completeness sake, let's move through uh, every part of the card. Uh, first off, we have the sanity uh, value here, the starting sanity value, and this is also coincidentally his maximum sanity value, and Ashcan Pete has a value of 4, so you would take tokens corresponding to uh, value 4 and add them to his character card and then we have the portrait and the name uh, of Ashcan Pete in the center of the card and on the right side we have the stamina value or the health of uh, Ashcan Pete and this is symbolized by a heart in a jar and you would as well take uh, tokens corresponding to six uh, stamina and place them on the card and then we have on the bottom part of the card we have Ashcan Pete's uh, special ability and this is scrounge each time Pete gains one common item unique item or spell after setup he may choose to instead gain one clue token common item unique item or spell uh, so he can basically ch change common items unique items or spells into uh, clue tokens or he can keep or he can interchange between those or he can uh, gain a clue token if he wants so that's a decently powerful ability. Uh, historically these are 
pretty strong in uh, Arkham Horror, the scrounger abilities. You need one, at least one character with this scrounger ability to keep digging through the deck and keep trying to find uh, great items. And for Pete, he can actually uh, still do this in this game. He can, he can gain whatever item that you need for the moment. Uh, then we have the setup part of the card, which is at the bottom uh, right corner of the character card. And this is what specifies what item speed uh, joins the game with and for him it's just an ally he starts with duke it's his dog and that's the only uh, item or ally that he starts the game with a more in-depth look on uh, these different parts of the game uh, this is the villain of the game or the ancient one as they are called both here and games like arkham horror uh, this is yog sothoth he has a special ability, all of the uh, Ancient Ones have special ability. This special ability is when an investigator suffers the penalties of an other world card. Uh, the, that card is returned to the box and not used for the rest of the game. If the other world deck is, becomes depleted, then yogg thought awakens. Uh, like I previously discussed, the way that the Ancient One awakens is by filling up its Doom Track up here and you do that by adding Doom Tokens. These are these small tokens uh, represented by, uh, by the King in Yellow, the one that should not be named Hastur. Uh, his, his likeness is on these tokens and I think he's actually in the game. But you fill up these, uh, this track with these different Doom Tokens and the most uh, common way a Doom token, token will come into play is uh, by playing an event card which you also do at the beginning of each new round. Uh, for instance here we have an event card that adds one Doom token to the Doom track and this is pretty common. Uh, most, um, well not most, but a lot of these cards actually have this effect and they will add Doom tokens. Uh, one other way to add Doom tokens is by failing adventures. So here we have an example of this. Uh, this is the storage closet adventure space and if you fail this adventure you would have to resolve this penalty uh, effect down here. Uh, you would have to lose one sanity and you would also have to add one doom token to the Ancient One's doom track. That's this icon right here. Uh, it looks like Hastur with some uh, tentacles coming underneath his cloak. Uh, the other way to add Doom Tokens to the Ancient One's Doom Track is by in investigators getting killed or getting devoured, as it is called in this game. Uh, when an investigator either goes insane or is killed by losing all of its stamina, uh, you would add one Doom Track to the Ancient One's... Uh, you would add one Doom Token to the Ancient One's Doom Track. So that is the way that the AI uh, of this game works. Uh, it's symbolized by this ancient ones and they try to fill up these uh, doom tracks that they have on their cards. Uh, if you do not manage to uh, beat this ancient one, which is basically sealing it before it can awaken, uh, for the players there's usually a, a longer track to be filled and you fill this track by adding uh, or winning elder sign tokens. And here we have another example of that. Uh, in the pre on the previous card we saw that uh, the Ancient One would add a Doom token to its Doom track. Instead for this, if we manage to beat this adventure, we would gain an Elder Sign symbolized by this Elder Sign symbol here. And that would basically mean that the investigators get to place one of these Doom tokens uh, or the Elder Sign tokens beneath the uh, Ancient One card uh, so that you can keep track of how many uh, elder signs you have and for Yogsa thought we would need 12 of these to win the game, seal him and uh, not let him awaken. If you are successful in adding uh, the elder signs to your elder sign track and you successfully complete the elder sign track before the ancient one awakens you have actually won the game. Uh, if you fail to do this, if the ancient one awakes uh, the game is not lost, but you have to fight the Ancient One, and this can be a pretty difficult battle. Uh, the life or the stamina value of the Ancient One is its doom track, so uh, you have to complete these tasks that are 
uh, assigned to the Ancient One card to be able to remove Doom Tracks from the Ancient One's Doom Track. And you have to remove all of these uh, Doom tokens uh, to actually win the game and kill the Ancient One. And this could be pretty difficult for most of these Ancient Ones. Uh, specifically Cthulhu is pretty much unbeatable. I don't think you can beat him. He's too hard uh, if he awakens. But you can beat him by sealing him and not allowing him to awaken. Uh, then you also have the attack of the Ancient One. Uh, you will get the first uh, uh, the first go at him, but then he will attack back at you. And for Yogg-Sothoth, it says when Yogg-Sothoth attacks, each investigator must either discard one trophy or be devoured. So that is pretty tough as well. Uh, you can work around this by collecting trophies and he can be beaten, but I think there are plenty of these uh, ancient ones that are actually pretty tough to beat. So it's not advisable. It's better to uh, try and, and win the game by sealing the Ancient One. So how do you advance? How do you uh, move forward through the game? Well, first of all, we have to take a look at the timer of the game. Uh, this is a uh, clocked game. It's a timed game. The investigators will get one turn each and then you have to move the clock forward. Uh, the only important dials on this clock are the 12, 3, 6 and 9 uh, spaces of the clock. So after one investigator has uh, completed their turn you have to move the clock three hours forward and when the clock moves uh, the entire length of the day and strikes midnight at 12 uh, a new event would happen and uh, you would have to resolve the new effect that will be entering play. Like previously shown these are the event cards or the mythos cards uh, if you are familiar with Arkham Horror. Uh, they are divided, they are pretty streamlined. In Arkham Horror they have several steps, but here they are pretty streamlined. Uh, you have an immediate effect in the top part of the card, and then you have a lingering or a later effect uh, at the bottom of the card. Uh, most of these, like I previously discussed, they add doom tokens or have some detrimental uh, impact on the game for the players. They add monsters or, or such. And then you have the lingering effect which could vary from uh, either preventing you from doing something or making something harder to accomplish or they can have midnight effects. So when the clock strikes midnight the following day uh, you have to resolve an additional effect. Uh, this one is uh, this one is pretty beneficial. First it adds one Doom token to the Doom track as its immediate effect and then you have the lingering effect so to speak is to add one additional adventure card to the board. Uh, this is a pretty good one. Uh, it helps the investigators because it gives more options on what type of adventure you could have. Then we have these cards which are purely, purely detrimental to the players. Uh, the immediate effect is a monster appears. The lingering effect or the midnight effect in this case is uh, the next time the clock strikes midnight add two doom tokens to the doom track. This is a bad card. This is a pretty detrimental card and this will uh, drive you to move faster forward. Uh, you cannot linger too, fo too long uh, in one place. You have to have a plan. You have to move forward. You have to add uh, elder signs to your track. Otherwise the ancient one with help of these cards will awaken much faster than you can reach your goal. So what can you as a player do to combat this? We have seen that the Ancient Ones uh, can add doom, doom Tokens to their Doom Track and actually awaken pretty fast. Uh, so you need to formulate a plan and you need to start doing things. And what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to have different adventures in the museum, uh, which is the area that you are uh, where your investigator is having uh, this adventure. Uh, the, the museum starts off with six of these spaces and they differ uh, widely. Some of these are pretty easy and some of these are pretty hard. Uh, the reward also reflects that. For instance, this is a horrible visions and this is a uh, fairly difficult card to encounter and resolve but the rewards are 
great because you get an elder sign and you get a unique item for completing this but you have to be really careful while uh, encountering these adventures because the uh, the penalty is severe for instance here two sanity and two stamina loss that's nearly half the life and half the sanity of some characters so you really have to be careful if we just take a quick look at these adventure cards, just to dissect them from top to bottom. Uh, first off you have the art of the card up here. Uh, then you have the name of the card together with this value here in green uh, with some tentacles around it. This is the trophy value. When you successfully encounter this place uh, or this adventure and you beat it, you would get this as a trophy and you can spend these trophy points uh, for various things in the game. Uh, next up we have some uh, flavor text for the games and this is pretty d disappointing. It's uh, basically some general th text that is connected to this adventure. There is nothing major here, no major plot story or anything. Uh, also in this space you would have some special abilities, so to speak, of these rooms or these adventures. Uh, for instance you would have the midnight effects will be placed here. Uh, if there are some terror effects, those would also be, be placed in this area. And you have the locked die, uh, locked die spaces, which also appear. And what this locked die space means is when you draw this and place this card, you have to place one of your, uh, in this case it's a green, uh, green die, you have to place one of your green dice here. And now this dice is locked. You have to complete this adventure to free this dice. Uh, you cannot free it uh, any other way. Uh, well, there is an uh, investigator that can actually free dice without encountering the adventure, but if you do not have that investigator, you have to encounter this adventure and successfully beat it to free this uh, card. Or, uh, no, no, not this card, this uh, dice. These are two different abilities that can appear um, on this adventure space. The at midnight ability, if this card is still in, in play when the clock strikes midnight, you would have to resolve this ability. For this uh, particular card, it says at midnight, add two doom tokens to the doom track. This is a terrible card. You need to focus on getting this card off the table immediately. If this card is on the table for well, if, if it's on the table for one day, it's, it's pretty bad. If it's on the table for two days, you have basically lost the game. You have no, no chance of completing this game. So this is one of the most, most uh, deadly cards uh, in this game, I think. Uh, you really have to be prepared to encounter some of these cards. Uh, and you have to be aware that when you draw new uh, rooms for your museum, you could draw one of these very, very bad cards. Uh, next up we have the terror effect, uh, which is another special ability that these adventures can have. And this comes into play if you fail one task on the adventure. Uh, you have to then also have rolled a terror symbol, and these are symbolized by the tentacles. Uh, so if you roll, let's see, let's say that for instance this is uh, your roll and you cannot complete this one simple track down here. You have a bunch of uh, scrolls and two terror markers, then you would have to resolve this terror effect because you have rolled the, a terror dice and you also have failed to complete this uh, task on the adventure card. Uh, you would discard these one of these to, to keep on going, but you cannot discard the terror card or the terror dice, uh, so you cannot escape this ability. If you have rolled a terror and you have failed, you have to resolve the terror event. So let's talk about the third area on this adventure card. This is where the different tasks are and this is where uh, you will focus your ma main attention to this uh, adventure card. What you do in the game is you get these six dice for your unmodified roll and then you can add the red or the yellow die depending on what type of item or weapon you have. Uh, but let's just focus on these tasks for now. Uh, let's say that this is your roll. You have rolled six dice and this is your roll. Uh, this particular 
this particular card does not have an arrow here. If you would have an arrow here, you actually have to complete these tasks in order. So you have to start with the top one and then if there is a middle one and then the bottom one. So you have to complete them in order. But for this particular card, uh, you can choose whichever one of these you want to complete. And we can actually complete both of these uh, since we have rolled both a peril, a uh, terror marker and a scroll. Uh, so we could choose to either complete the top or the bottom one. Uh, so let's say that you choose to complete the top one. You would place these dice on the card and then you would get these other four uh, dice to, to keep on uh, rolling. So let's roll these again, just real fast. And we roll uh, a successful completion of the second task as well. So then we would just place these on the card and now this card is successfully completed. Uh, let's just for uh, comparison's sake, let's say that we had rolled uh, this, f these four results instead. We can only complete the scroll part, but we cannot complete the skull part. Uh, that would mean that we uh, have failed the roll. And if you fail a roll, there is there are different options that you can have. You, you can either use one of your uh, clue tokens, which are these footmarks, uh, you can use one of these to re-roll any number of dice that are still available to you. So for instance, we could choose to keep, uh, keep this scroll and re-roll these three dice, and we will discard this uh, clue token, and we, we would have a go at finding yet another uh, peril marker, which we did this time. So now we have successfully completed uh, the roll. On, if you do not have any of these clue tokens, uh, the other thing you can do, you could focus this result on your investigator. So let's say that Ashcan Pete is the one that's trying to resolve uh, this particular adventure. So he can choose to first discard one of these failed uh, rolls. So this uh, dice is gone from this turn. Uh, so he cannot use it any longer. And he can choose to focus this on his own uh, character token and now he has two dice left and he can keep on going. Uh, this card in particular does not have any terror effects. If you would have a card with a terror effect this is where they would take place if you had rolled a uh, terror die. So let's see if he can successfully com complete this. He cannot. He has now rolled some investigation uh, markers but those are not needed for this com particular task in question. So what you will do now is you would uh, take another die and place it to the side and this will now also be gone from this turn. So Pete now has one dice left and he needs this uh, he needs this peril marker to be successful here. So he has one in six chance to do this and he rolls and it's a failed roll again. So now Pete has failed this uh, task in question and he would suffer the consequences. He would gain a two sanity and a two stamina loss. So this bring, uh, brings us down to the last uh, final area of the adventure card uh, in question. And here we have the penalties and the rewards for successfully completing this or uh, failing this adventure. The area in red is the failure and the penalty and the area in white are the rewards. And these can differ widely depending on the level of the card and how difficult the card is uh, to encounter and to successfully complete. Uh, some of these add doom tokens like previously discussed. Some of these have just straight up stamina and sanity loss and some of them will have uh, different effects like adding monsters and such. Uh, for the rewards these are a bit more varied. Most of uh, the penalties for uh, failing a card are stamina and uh, sanity related but for the rewards there's a bit of variety. You can you have these elder signs that you can get, you have various items that you can get and then you have these uh, this uh, circle with some uh, sort of an icon in it. That's the uh, that's the symbol for a, an outer world. Uh, on top of that you have this elder thing uh, symbol here which means that you have to spawn a monster. So even though this is a success and even though you get uh, some beneficial rewards you still have to spawn a monster for successfully completing this task. 
So these are the other type of adventure cards that you can have in play. These are the other worlds and these are easily recognized by their back having this large circle with this green portal in it and the normal adventure cards have this maze and they are kind of brownish. These uh, function basically like the adventure cards but they do offer some greater reward. Uh, the more uh, easier ones to resolve offer still offer very good rewards uh, for instance here you would get a spell and an elder sign sure you would also have to add a doom token but this could be good because this might be your last elder sign or you might be really far ahead so you don't really care that the uh, that the ancient one gets one extra doom token because you get that one extra elder sign and uh, then we have relia which is one of the tougher ones to actually uh, resolve it gives three elder signs this is an amazing card uh, this is really a great great card but it does have some steep uh, steep punishment if you are uh, if you fail at resolving this card it has two sanity and two stamina loss and this would kill a lot of investigators if you draw this mid game and late game if you have been uh, a little bit uh, uncareful with uh, your resource management. These function just like the normal adventure cards. They look the same, they have the same uh, organization on the front face of the card. So uh, just treat them as any other adventure card. So let's take a look at various uh, different items that can help you in your adventuring in Elder Sign. Uh, we start off with the common items. These are symbolized by a uh, yellow back with a pistol on it and they are also yellow they have a yellow frame on their front face most of these will add the yellow die to your uh, dice roll and this yellow die is actually a little bit better version of the green die uh, some of these will also have some special effect like for instance here we have the shotgun and it says after rolling this card this to change one die to a peril result so you can alter some of the results on your roll. Then we have the slightly better items. Uh, these are the upgrades from the uh, common items. These are the unique items. They are symbolized uh, or easily recognized by a red back with a sword on it and they are also they also have a red frame on their front face. Most of these will add the red die to your uh, dice pool and some of these will have an effect and this effect is much stronger than the uh, yellow uh, common item effect for instance here we have the flute of the other gods and it says after rolling this card to defeat one monster the, this is a great effect that you will uh, need when uh, encountering different monsters on different adventure cards Next up we have the spells of the game and these are a bit better than the unique items. They are easily recognized by this purple back with this uh, book on it and they also have a purple frame on their front side. Uh, like I said these are a little bit better than the unique items and most of them will have this space for a die and this is called securing a die. To place a die on this spell, spell is called to secure a die. Uh, so you would roll for one of your adventures and maybe you are going to fail but you will like to save one of these results and when you do this when you secure a die on a spell that die will stay on this spell until you remove it from the spell uh, that is a little bit different than uh, than focusing a die on your character token because if you fail the adventure and there's a die on your character token that die will automatically go back to the uh, dice pool but if you focus it or secure it on a spell it will stay on the spell until either you or one of the other characters uh, takes that die from that spell and uses it in a adventure then some, then you will also have some of these cards which will have some effect and these, these are pretty powerful effects uh, for instance here we have the voice of Ra and it says after rolling this card to change one die to a result of your choice that is a pretty powerful effect and can help you out immensely in your adventuring so here we have the ally cards of the game and these are easily recognized by their orange back with a man in a trench coat on it uh, they also have an orange frame on their front face uh, some of these come into play during setup like for instance Duke 
he is the dog that accompanies Ashcan Pete, so he will actually enter the game uh, during setup. And these all uh, these allies have pretty powerful abilities. Duke, for instance, can avoid uh, an adventure card's penalty. You discard Duke and you avoid an adventure card penalty. And this can be uh, something that means uh, life or death for, for instance, Ashcan Pete because uh, some of these adventure cards have pretty steep penalties that you need to inflict on yourself for failing the adventure uh, in question. And then we have some other different powerful abilities. For instance, here we have Professor Armitage, and he has uh, placed two spells on Professor Armitage when he joins you. You may use these spells as if they were your own. So when Professor Armitage joins you, you immediately gain two spells. Uh, this is a pretty powerful ability, it depends on what kind of spells you draw, but spells are extremely powerful in this game. So gaining two free spells when Professor Armitage joins you, that is a great ability to have. Next up we have the entrance to the museum. Uh, the way this game is laid out, you have to have an encounter each turn, and this is basically in the game to allow you for a neutral encounter. Uh, if your character is too weak or if it's uh, about to die, you could go to the entrance and have one of these three encounters on here. Uh, so you can have receive first aid encounter, search the lost and found encounter or buy a souvenir encounter. The receive first uh, aid encounter uh, allows you to heal for free uh, either one stamina or one sanity, that's of your choice, or you can buy uh, a full restoration of one of your attributes for two trophies, or you can pay four trophies uh, to restore both your stamina and your sanity to its maximum level. Uh, so you, if you have some extra trophies, you can go to the entrance and uh, heal and uh, psychologically treat your character so it does not go insane and it does not die. Uh, then next up we have the search lost and found. This is a 50-50 chance on getting some loot. Uh, so you would roll a die and based on the various results, uh, for instance if you roll a investigation, to investigation marker and there are three of these on the green dice. Uh, so if you roll one of those uh, you would either lose a stamina or a sanity, that's also of your choice, so you can choose which one you want to uh, lose. But if you roll some of the other die results, for instance if you roll a uh, scroll, you would get one clue token, if you roll a peril, you would get one common item, and if you roll a terror, you would get one spell. Uh, so that is um, a gambly way to gain some resources if you are low on resources. It's about, it is 50-50 chance to actually gain something, but only the uh, common item and the spell are actually worth it. So uh, this space is for desperate times, basically. Or if you do not have anything else to do with your character um, during that turn in particular. Then we have the third and last uh, action that you can take here or space that you can encounter and that is a buy a souvenir action and this is where you can spend all your trophies from defeating adventures, uh, clearing adventures and rooms and from defeating monsters. Uh, so you have various different choices here. Uh, you can buy a clue token for one trophy, you can buy one common item for two trophies, you can buy a unique item for three trophies, one spell for four trophies, one ally for five trophies and you can buy an elder sign for ten trophies. Uh, it's pretty expensive but sometimes it's well worth and uh, it's well worth it and sometimes it can be a game changer and something you really desperately need to do. So keeping those trophies for e either buying some new items to replenish your supply or to get that last elder sign. Uh, that is a great way to spend uh, some of your accomplishments on. Okay, so after this setup and the intro of the game we come to this uh, immensely enjoyable part where you get to hear me talk about some of the uh, misplays and apologize for some of the misplays during this uh, gaming session. I have not reviewed the footage and I have noticed that I did a few things uh, incorrectly. Some of these things do not affect gameplay at all. They could have affected gameplay, but uh, either they had no effect at all or I didn't resolve 
them during the game so they did not affect uh, anything that went on during those turns. Uh, first of all, let's talk about Yogg-Sothoth. Uh, I will immediately at the beginning of the game start talking about how Yogg-Sothoth needs to add 12 Doom tokens to his Doom track to awaken. This is not the case. Uh, Yogg-Sothoth only has 10 spaces on his card. I know that uh, this did not affect gameplay at all, but it is uh, a bit frustrating to listen to someone say that Yogg Thought needs 12 uh, tokens to awaken when he in reality only needs uh, 10 tokens to fulfill uh, his awakening condition. Uh, next up we have the ability of Jenny Barnes and I think I misplayed. This is the one that actually affects gameplay a lot. Uh, I think I misplayed this maybe a few times. I'm not too sure. Uh, I did not draw that many unique items, so I hope it wasn't that many times. But let's look at the Jenny Barnes special ability. It says Trust Fund. At the start of her resolution phase, Jenny may discard one common item, clue token or spell. It doesn't say anything about a unique item. So you have to have one common item, a clue token or a spell. Uh, so she can discard any of those three. and. For that she gets to add the yellow and red die to her dice pool. Uh, I think most of, the, uh, most of the items that I discarded with Jenny Barnes to get this effect were actually spells, but I am pretty sure that I actually discarded one or two unique items to get this effect. Uh, and I have to apologize for that. Uh, I think I was a little bit too hasty with resolving her abilities and I even remarked in the game that I thought that her ability was a little bit too overpowered. Uh, but if we scale this down to her only being able to discard those three, it's still a bit overpowered I think, but it's not as bad as I thought it was. So the last thing I did incorrectly, and you can pretty much see this when I draw uh, one of these monsters for the first time during gameplay I actually paused and I kind of looked at it and I talked about some tokens what I meant was that I saw this mask and I kind of remembered from Arkham Horror that masked monsters are actually different than normal monsters and this is exactly what happened in my Dawn of the Zeds playthrough uh, where I thought that all uh, the monsters go into the monster cup but that is not the case these masked monsters that have a mask on them should not enter play when Yogg-Sothoth is the Ancient One. Uh, these masked monsters only enter play when uh, Nayarl Hatep is the Ancient One. Uh, so yeah, this was a this was one of those things that went, went wrong but I didn't actually fight any of these monsters. I didn't resolve any cards with these monsters on them. So in, in a way it was a innocent mistake but it was a mistake nonetheless. A mistake I apologize for. These should not have been in the monster cup. Nayarol Hatep was not the ancient one. It was Yogg-Sothoth. So these should not have been in play at all. Okay, so those were some of the errors that I made during gameplay. Uh, actually, just one of these uh, mattered for the gameplay, so I hope this doesn't take away from the uh, playthrough overall. Uh, these other two did not actually matter uh, at all. The uh, kind of a mispronunciation of how many uh, spaces Yogg-Sothoth thought needs to fill up with Doom tokens didn't matter at all. Uh, the monsters didn't matter that much because I never fought them, uh, but the Jenny Barnes ability did. Uh, I also failed to remove uh, a few items uh, a couple of times, but I did fix that because I, when I stopped recording I actually uh, took the time to remove them. I just didn't want to lean over the camera to uh, pick the items from the different spaces on the board. Uh, so if you take a look a little bit further in the playthrough, you would see that uh, some of the trophies are discarded, some of the spells are discarded. Uh, I did actually remember to do those. I just never said it on camera that I have done that. Uh, yeah, so uh, I hope that these do not take away from the playthrough, like I said. Um, I will try even harder in the future. I did try really hard to read the rules and reread the rules, uh, and I kind of played some... Uh, mock turns just to uh, try and remember uh, and make this uh, playthrough be as correct as possible rules wise but 
still mistakes do happen. Uh, I was also kind of, uh, well, I actually thought that I uh, thought that the yellow dye was the red dye for quite a long time. Uh, so I had some, uh, I don't know, I, I had some uh, strange moments where I choose to use clue tokens and reroll instead of using the results on the yellow die. I can understand that for the red die. I wanted to keep the red die for the wild card and uh, for some, uh, some of its beneficial effects that it, it has on it. But for the yellow die, I should not have used some of the clue tokens. I should not have rerolled. Uh, a couple of times that I did. Uh, I just kind of thought that the yellow die was really powerful and I really did not want to use it even though it would have been much better uh, both for me and for the sake of the playthrough to actually have used the red die or the yellow die for uh, the result that was on it. But yeah, that's just a quick Quick correction from me, hopefully, like I said, this does not take away from the playthrough. Hopefully you can uh, still somewhat enjoy the game uh, and hope you have fun watching.